Okay, so anyway, here's the thing about health. <clears throat> and you all know it. Even if the rest of the, the mobs don't really know it, you all know it. It's more important than anything. Well, yeah, certainly more important than money and gold. Certainly more important than fame. Uh, more important than, uh, yeah, you know, I guess the only thing that it's equal with is love. Because, and the reason I say equal, not to offend anyone, is just because when you don't have health, it's hard to f even feel. You know, when you're really, I'm not talking about, you know, say if we're, if we're like, um, really, if we're, if we're mildly ill, but if, if we're, if we're severely ill, we don't know anything. We can't feel anything. We, you know, you can't be a good mom. You can't be a good pop. You can't be a good brother. You can't be a good daughter. You can't be a good anything, friend, employee, boss, whatever you can't be. It trumps all things, right? In the real sense of the word, not in the Donald J sense of the word. But it, 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 it's, it's everything. It's everything. And here's an interesting thing. Do, do this. Try this out for you guys. If I could put these all together, so I'll look cute. I, three, 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 three. I got three things here going. But anyway, <clears throat> try this. I used to do this often. <clears throat> um, next time you run into somebody, friend, or whatever, at work, say, hey, listen, can you, what's on your list today? I mean, you have a list. Most people have a list. What did you, what's on your list today to do? Can you share it with me? I just, because it just kind of give me an idea of, 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 of the way you think and the way you are and all that sort of thing, right? So, okay, so they give you your list. And I can tell you probably you've got a 99.9% .9 chance of not finding the word health. Isn't 0 0.9999? Okay, so here's what I'm saying is this. So you ask the person, if health is not on your list, if it's not even on the bottom of your list, <laughs> something funny about health, it has a way of working itself up to the top of the list. So if you don't pay attention to it now, if you don't preserve it now, it's going to be the only thing you can do is to, is to con concern yourself about that. Okay, that's for most people. Not all of us. Not all of us. There's some people out there. You know, I know you. I know you guys out there that are you know, have have really you know lived really healthy lifestyles for the most part. As much as we know, remember we <clears throat> we can't be blamed 100 percent for everything because we grew up in a world that was full of lies. The world lies, 100% lies. You, <clears throat> a rule of thumb is that, is that uh, if, you, if you hear it, if, you, if people are talking about it and it's on the news, it's not true. And whatever they're looking at, whatever they're pointing at, is probably they should be pointing, looking the other way. It's just the way it is. And it's not new. It's not new. It's been around. It's just, it's, it's sadly human nature. Humans are flawed, extremely flawed organisms, weird organisms. We've got amazing qualities that are untapped. We don't know about it. We don't know who we are. We don't know our potential. We have no idea of our potential. Um, none. <clears throat> but I'm telling you this. And I and I and you please understand something that if I say something like this or anything, it doesn't. It's not just like I just thought of it. It's off the top of my head. It's pretty well researched and everything. If we spent as much time and as much effort and all of our heart and soul and whatever that word is, creativity, you put. I'm not sure what that means, but <clears throat> we put into ourselves. into enhancing and becoming more of who and what we could be rather than this stuff. Rather than 
anything out there. You know, from the time we started, from the time we started, uh, you know, the beginning of, what was the beginning of strife? Do you remember? If, if we, I'm, I'm just talking biblically now. We're talking biblically, biblically, biblically. Okay, so for those of you who aren't interested in the Bible, the Judeo-Muslim Christian Bible, then this won't mean as much. But biblically, it was Cain and Abel. And one of those guys had built a plow. In other words, he had built a machine. And that's where it started. <laughs> Death. The machine started back then. No, I'm not crazy at all. <clears throat> um, anyway, that's when it started. And look at it now. Look at what happened to the machine. So anyway, um, so we put all of our effort out here and we've come and we've got all this incredible stuff that we call technology. I don't really know another word for technology other than uh, uh, maybe I idology, idols. Thou shalt have no other idol but me. Thou shalt have no other God but me. Oh, we do. We, we, we certainly do. I don't care how religious you think you are. You put more hours, I, even if you're praying five times a day, six times a day, whatever it is, you put more of your heart and soul into this stuff that we're on right now. Now, there are good and bad in it. I mean, good, let's say useful and non-useful. Let's get away from morality. Useful and non-useful. Yeah, very useful. That's how, I mean, we wouldn't be having this, this conversation. Can you imagine a conversation, worldwide conversation? Whew. I remember the first time that ever happened. I don't know if you all remember. You probably don't all remember, but 1969, I think it was, the Beatles made uh, had the, they had the first time the technology allowed them to have a, uh, the, like a whole world in concert or, or a whole world connected. It was a big deal. It was on every TV and everything like that. And again, they had told John Lennon, who's one of the Beatles, if you don't know that, uh, hey man, we need a song for this event that's going to be phenomenal. Can you figure it out? We got like two days left. He said, hmm, let me check it out. So he did. He came up with this song called All You Need Is Love. And that turned out to be the first song, the first music that was ever on a worldwide skit, uh, uh, worldwide um, broadcast. And it was, uh, I mean, everybody was there. Mick Jagger, they were, they were all there. Uh, it was a Pretty amazing thing. But anyway, so here we are now where it's natural, normal. Everyone's everyone, everyone's connected all over the world. Yeah. Anyway, I I, I only talk about that. Yeah, exactly. Only one God. Uh, only one, uh, only one, um, yeah. So anyway, um, and then uh, and the only reason that wouldn't be interested interesting to the Hindus and Buddhists and Jains um, and other people of other and Taoists, just because that's not their scripture. So they don't read it. It doesn't mean that it's not, it's not, wouldn't be important to them. And they may have read it. Yeah, the Beatles, yeah. Unbelievable. And those of you who don't know it, it's too bad. It's a tragedy. Um, listen, I just went, I just real quickly, I'm sorry, I'll get into this stuff. I, I know you guys are anxiously waiting for answers to your questions. Uh, but I just went to uh, Hanoi. Yeah, Hanoi. This week, uh, a couple of days, I had I had to see some people there, some uh, good stuff. We might even have a center there in Vietnam. <clears throat> um, that, uh, but I had I saw some some sick people too as well, of course. And uh, but anyway, I'm on the airplane, and you know, this song kept playing over. They kept playing it over and over and over. Again. And I I got my son, my my son. I'm sure doesn't even want to know when I'm going to text him anymore because uh, I had to tell him because he's a musician and, and I listen to this music and, and it's like popular, right? And I cannot believe how shallow, how, how absurdly pre-adolescent emotionally the music, the song, uh, the, the lyrics are. The lyrics are like, what? And they think that's clever, and the and the and the music is what you know. I'm thinking about the generation I grew up in. Sorry, the '60s. Come on, I don't know. I don't know. Nah, eighty percent was cool. 
now. 90% is not cool. But there are some great people today, man. I mean, John Mayer, I love him. I love a lot of I love a lot of people. But so anyway, that's not I didn't mean to get into that. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, so let's get to some answers and questions and answers. Yeah, it is all tied together. You're right. Yeah, it's good. Speaking of music, you guys, is do, do you know, do you have enough you do you have a lot of music in your life? I'll tell you something. When I when I look back at my life and I look at the times of my most when I'm like resonating with my my life, I'm listening to music. When I'm out of resonance with my life, I'm I'm not listening to music. And I, I don't know that until I listen to music again. It's kind of like exercise. You don't, you think, oh, exercise. Oh my God, I don't want to do it. And then when you do it first day or two, you go, wow, I can't stop. You know, same kind of thing. But music brings you to a place that is out of, out of time. It's out of time. It brings you to this present moment. And that's the beauty of music. That's the beauty of dance. Okay. Is that. And so that's why we can't ever, ever not do these things. We have to do that. Okay. And the, the uh, music is the truly universal language. I mean, you, you know, you don't need words. I mean, lyrics are one thing, but forget it. Um, um, so anyway, okay. So you guys are really anxious. I sorry, I sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. So let's get to your questions. And um, but uh, but anyway, music takes you to now which is where we need to get to. And this actually is pertinent, relative, rele relevant to all of us if, if, if we have a chronically fermenting cells or not. I mean, if we know that we do or not, we all do. But some of us don't know it. Some of us do know it. Okay, um, is the fact that, uh, remember this, and I'll have to say this every time, and I want to remind you guys, because there's always new listeners, and, and keep, keep, just keep in mind that um, the, the immune system uh, is the shadow of the mind. And um, that's a big problem. That's a big problem for many reasons because none of us have any control over our minds, and that's that. That's that's the problem. Yeah. So anyway, so you can't control your mind. You can't. You can't. Believe me, you can't control it. You can't tell it what to think. Hey, tomorrow from now on, I'm not going to have this particular thought. I'm only going to think the good things right i mean there's naivete like that right uh positive affirmations and all that work really good while you're doing them and then they are gone because then your subconscious kicks in and your subconscious is whew, vast vast consciousness is the tip of the iceberg iceberg subconsciousness is there doesn't mean it's not accessible doesn't mean we cannot access it access it however we don't normally it's not part of life, okay? It just remains there. And it contributes to this th phenomenon known as internal dialogue. And internal dialogue really, really, really establishes underlying fundamental emotional sets, emotional perceptual sets of life. And there, and then the, the uh, immune system follows it. All right, so... One of, the, one of the ways is music. And the, re, and the thing about music, and I'm not, listen, I, no offense to anybody, but I'm not talking about listening to hard rock because, because that's a whole different thing, right? But I guess that could bring you to now too, as long as there's no words. If there's no words, um, then, uh, th 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 then you're on a journey of, now, of being here now. You're on a journey of being here now. And if it's hard rock that brings you now, that's fine. Whatever it is. If it's Johann Sebastian Bach, that's my guy. Um, uh, anyway, yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah, you know, so Susan, yeah, you know, all, all you guys are, your comments are beautiful. Yeah, and, and the immune system is the shadow of the mind. I mean, it's, I, I tried, I don't know how else to like say it, but it's just right there. So that's really important. So we've got to guard our mind. Uh, and um, there's an aphorism called, as, as a man thinketh, so is he. And then there was a book written by, I don't know if you all read it, it's called James Allen. But 
anyway, that book implies that thinking is a something we do rather than something that happens. So I'm not so sure I agree with that. However, that's an aphorism out of one of the, I think, scriptures, I think. Don't remember. Okay, so um, I'm hot today, and the problem is, as you can see, see, let's, I'm going to turn off the lights because we no longer need them because you got enough light coming in. One moment, you guys. So, yeah, so it used to be, remember, I, was, I always talk about 12-hour days and 12-hour nights, so here we are. Where are we? What's this month again? I never know what month it is because I'm always confused by the fact that it's just now. Um, we're in uh, March. Are we in March? Yeah, we're in March. Right? Okay, so days are getting longer, so we're getting lighter sooner. But uh, still, I mean, so it used to be that it wasn't getting light until around 7. 7. Uh, 6.35 or something like that. It wasn't really light. Like now it's really light at 7 a.m. here. Okay. Anyway, and if any of you, I don't know, had a chance to see, uh, it's called Wake Up Asia last yesterday. It was a long three-hour uh, streaming uh, thing. On um, You could stream it or you could be on the Zoom call with some of the great people that have got the courage to come out and talk about what's really going on in the, in the world here. And it looks like uh, I'm really, 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 really like for the first time in three years, four years, starting to get a little bit optimistic and thinking that we just might climb out of this as a whole because the human humanity is and, and it might. And I think what's being awakened in us is that those parts of humanity that are worth us fighting for. OK, because there's a lot of parts about us that are not. And fighting doesn't have to mean bloodshed, although unfortunately a lot of times that's what it takes. But fighting doesn't have to mean that. I mean, do you realize let me tell you, give you an analogy, a metaphor that's very, very important for us as a whole, as humanity as a whole, okay? I don't know. Now try this sometime. If you ever get the chance, if you're ever around an elephant and a hill, okay, now Try to push that elephant uphill if it doesn't want to go. For example, it sits down. Well, that's exactly what it would be like for them, the 1%, uh, to move us if we didn't want to move, if we just didn't move. That's our power. Our power is in not doing. And we could all come together on one day. We could figure out what that day is and say, from this day until the day it's all over, we're not doing anything. We're not going to work. We're not doing this. We're not going to keep this mad, insane machine alive. We're not going to keep it alive. And then, whoosh. so that means you have to have already been, we need to have planning on this. We need to be organized. We really need to be organized. We need to say, you know, like, uh, you know, get, get enough food, get enough, th get yourself in a situation if you can and all that sort of thing. And then we all just do what? Nothing. Fantastic power. Um, anyway, so let's get to some, 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 uh, and I apologize for my, uh, well, I have a tendency to do so anyway, live stream. Here we go. So I'm going to start with, I'll, I'll start you guys with some of the Instagram questions. Then I'll go to the other one. So thoughts on Ebo can Ebo help or hurt platelets. All right. So, so Ebo Ebo is a uh, extra corporeal. Um, it's you know extra corporeal means co 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 uh, so I just I just want you guys guys to know that scientific terms are not that hard. Okay, extra means in addition to right. So in addition to the corpus, the corpus is the body. So corporeal is just one of their really smart. I'm smart. Words, so extracorporeal, so outside of the body, uh, oxygenation and ozonation, E-B-O-O. -O. Okay, so they oxygenate, oxygenate and, ozone, and ozonate. Why do I say both? Because you can't put pure ozone in, 
you know, it's far too oxidative. In other words, it, 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 in an oxidation, something that oxidizes, remember, really simple, not really simple. I want you all to realize that you guys all can get this easily. And a lot of you guys blow me away. You're like, wow, you're, you know, you've done your homework, you've read. But anyway, it's really easy. Oxidation, real simple, steals an electron, produces. Now what? The thing that lost an electron needs an electron, and it freaks out to get one. And then it gets one. And then the, the place it got it from one now is absent. And it starts like a chain reaction. Okay. So it's an extremely um, um, uh, oxidizing. Let's get this here, maybe. Is that okay? Yeah. Is that blocking? No, no, it's okay. Okay. So anyway, it's an extremely oxidizing um, substance. And that's why they use it in Olympic pill pools now, because it's like 100,000 or even more. A million? times more bacterial or microcidal kill side side you know like homicide suicide uh genocide okay side okay homicide okay so more uh, bacteria or microcidal than um chlorine right and these guys are swimming in their eyes you can't get their eyes all messed up from the chlorine so anyway it's used for that okay so it's extremely oxidizing well in germany for 50 years now it's been Germany and Europe, but but a lot a lot more in Germany. It's been used uh, at least fifty years, maybe even longer, uh, and in and in Russia. And in fact, if we look at where the old Soviet Union used to be, uh, and all and what they called the uh, the bloc countries, you know, uh, that 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 after they took down the Berlin Wall and Soviet Union became Russia, then all of these countries formed uh, became um, sort of independent. Um, you know, uh, such as Ukraine and stuff like that. But remember something about Ukraine, you guys. The capital of Russia used to be Kiev, which is now the capital of, of Ukraine. And so, the, you know, there's, you know, uh, you know, the question is, is Ukraine really separate than Russia? It's never been really determined. Um, but anyway, for example, but I mean, so they're all, it's so close ethnically and you know, culturally and all that sort of thing. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> all of those countries that were behind what they called the Iron Curtain, including Cuba, were doing research on stuff because they didn't have access to big pharma, right? They were cut off. So they were doing research on ozone, on hydrogen peroxide, on, uh, you know, um, um, ultraviolet light, on things that we uh, didn't because we were uh, always, uh, you know, pushing and taking drugs. So a lot of the original research on ozone and stuff that comes out of that. So anyway, so it's no surprise that they've been using it for a long time and they realize the benefits. There's, I have a, I have a textbook here. Look, where is it? Let me show you. Here, check this out. Check this out. This is, this is an old textbook. Can you all see it here? A textbook in, 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 uh, uh, by an Italian guy, um, and uh, it was used. It's used in the, in the to teach doctors, right? A lot of data, you guys. Not nonsense. Ah. So anyway, just want to let you know. Ozone. All right. So ozone is O3, means there's three atoms of of oxygen. Okay, that's uneven. Okay, you have to have paired electrons to have neutrality. Okay, so one oxygen alone has just has an extra electron, and therefore it's uh, not stable. So you put them together and you got O2, which is oxygen gas that we breathe. And that is stable and very, very important because when it gets into our body, our body can break it apart and grab those electrons and use them to produce ATP, which is energy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But now if you add a third one on there, you got, yeah, you got ozone. Now ozone is a natural phenomenon. It happens when the ultraviolet light from the sun hits the oxygen of our atmosphere and <laughs> we have what's called the ozone belt. Yeah. All right. And that ozone belt is so powerful. It actually ref reflects away some, um, you know, uh, uh, rays, electromagnetic rays that could be really deadly. So without the ozone layer, actually we'd all be dead. Yeah. And I won't even begin to tell you where my mind just went because I had some stories about, gold and Anunnaki and stuff like that, that you may not have known about, but anyway, yeah. <clears throat> but, um, uh, 
Anyway, so ozone is phenomenal and it's been used for a long time. Now, there are different ways of using ozone in case you all don't know. And I, the reason I'm going into this just a little bit is because um, not everybody understands what ozone is and how it could be helpful. But the there's what they call major autohemo ozone, which was pretty much standard in, 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 in East Germany and, uh, you know, what, what was known as Yugoslavia and Czechoslovakia and still Czechoslovakia, but I mean, you know, all, all those countries, um, they use pretty standard, but, um, so any, and that's where they take out 200 cc's of your blood into a glass, important glass, because ozone's reactive. If you, if you use plastic, unless that's a very specific plastic, which we do use when we give uh, people to take, take home for vaginal insufflation or rectal insufflation, uh, but it's got to be very, very special, not because that otherwise that ozone is just gonna eat it. So, uh, oh, here it is. Is this it? Huh? Huh? I guess that's it. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, so ozone. Uh, so it takes out your blood. You take out. It takes out the blood, and then they. So you got two hundred cc's of blood, and then they then they put in two hundred cc's of uh, uh, ozone gas from an ozone generator that's connected to an oxygen. So you got one hundred percent oxygen going in there because you don't want to get. For example, you don't want to buy a home o uh, uh, ozone generator. And just use the air from that that uh, that we breathe. We call the ambient air. You don't want to use that because seventy percent of it is nitrogen. So it means you're going to be oxidized. You're going to be causing nitrogen free radicals, which you don't want. But what you can get if you can't get a prescription for oxygen uh, tanks, which is hard to get because the doctor has to prove that you need it and all that sort of thing, unless you pay for it cash, and be expensive. But anyway. Uh, it's called an uh, oxygen concentrator. So it's a little machine. Looks like um, RD2, R2DD, R2DT, D2. Remember the guy? Uh, that little thing on Star Wars. Anyway, looks like that. And uh, what it does is it takes it takes the uh, nitrogen out of and, and the, some of the other gases out of the uh, air and delivers about 95 percent oxygen so you're getting pretty pretty pure oxygen so that's another way of doing it at home but anyway um but anyway so ozone when we do it you wouldn't do this at home the ones you could do at home with rectal and vaginal uh and oral for certain situations um there you go proverbs as a man think of in his heart so is he yeah thank you Anne. there you go there you go that's where it comes from <clears throat> james allen did you ever read that book It's called As a Man Thinketh, from that proverb. So, of course, something as brilliant as that has to come from Solomon. Solomon is a, the guy that wrote uh, Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and Psalms. Pretty cool guy. Anyway, um, uh, so you, you put in the 200 cc's of ozone, uh, depending, 40 gamma, 70 gamma. You know, they're different, different strengths. Um, Keeping in mind that you're going to probably going to break up pretty easily the red blood cells. So, but you've got to mix it. And what's a beautiful thing to see is you just take the, the glass with the, with the blood and the ozone and you do it slowly. Now, I always see people doing this. It's like, what? Don't do that. You're going to, you're going to cause hemolysis, which is breaking up of the red blood cells. You do it slowly. And don't have the nurse do it. You do it. That's what I, th I you know, I gotta, I, even at my center, I got to remind them. Why? Because remember this thing called intention. Remember, remember that. That's why the person preparing your food, if they hate you, if they just had a fight with you, don't eat their, don't eat the food. Okay, food's got to be prepared with love because it's mostly water. And remember, the, remember, imoto. You know, imoto with the with the with the with the crystals, right? And you can bless water or you can curse water, right? I mean, you know, so water has memory. It carries memory. Okay, and it carries stuff so um 
<clears throat> anyway, so what I'd like you to do is you take that. I, you take it and you move it really slowly near your heart. And you think that this is going to restore your body to complete balance. This is going to be, this is a, a, a blessing. This is, you, you just, and you think of the word health and, uh, uh, and love and whatever is just, and you put that intention into it. Okay. So, Cause the nurse might be thinking about who knows a fight she had earlier this morning, uh, uh, what she's got to do after work, uh, what, I mean, you know, whatever it is, and it's not related to you. And yeah, you did read that, huh, Catherine? Cool. Um, um, I, I'm not quite sure. I have a whole different concept of thinking, but as I just mentioned, I don't think it's a voluntary act. Um, so anyway, um, so you do that and then you hang it up and you restore it. Now, what happens when you're doing that with the ozone is you'll notice that the blood turns bright, bright red. Most of our blood, when it comes out, is really dark and thick. Okay, so we're, because we're all, all of us are not hydrated enough. Not all of us, but most of us are not hydrated enough. Um, and dehydration, you would not believe how powerful that is. I mean, I have seen people come into the emergency room with um, elderly people that the family told, told me was... You know, I, you know, I'm afraid that our grandma is uh, is demented. She's uh, senile and all that. After two liters of water over, you know, a few hours because she's got an old heart, you can't do it quickly. She's like back to normal. Water is amazing. Water is amazing. So, um, so anyway, but anyway, so you see it turn bright red. So why? What does ozone do? What does ozone do? Ozone does several things. Number one, ozone is O3. Oxygen is O2. Ozone is very unstable, but lasts a nanosecond, a millisecond, maybe. It doesn't last very long, right? So, so two O3s, unstable O3s, quickly become three O2s. So they become, you increase the oxygenation by one third. So the blood turns bright red. So you've got a lot of more ox a lot more oxygen. Why is that cool? Why is that necessary? Because ah, cancer just doesn't do well with oxygen. Uh, doesn't have a lot of, it's just not ready for it. Uh, our other cells need it desperately. It also prevents cancer from doing its dance. So really, really important there. Number two, that ozone is starting to um, uh, oxidize the white blood cells that are in that blood sample of 200 cc's you just got. And what happens with that? Those white blood cells say, no way. So they start pushing out all of these really powerful uh, cytokines. Uh that block the process of oxidation. Now, those same cytokines just happen to stimulate the immune system. So now when you're re-infusing this, bl this ozonated blood into you, now remember the amount of ozone in there is very small. It's like really mostly oxygen, but that little bit of ozone is important. So anyway, that's why it's called EBO with two O's, oxygenation and O's. You're getting a lot of oxygen, but you're getting that ozone. So anyway, then they came up with um, uh, doing what's called hyperbaric ozone, which is 10 pass. Where And the reason they did that is because to, to do this, you've got to use heparin and heparin. You put heparin into the glass and it prevents the blood from clotting. But relation related to your question about platelets, it turns out that the heparin and the ozone can cause platelet clumping. And platelet clumping is not, uh, or they're not, they're not in their healthiest form. They can cause problems. Um, so that's why instead of um, oz uh, instead of heparin, you can use um, citrate, and citrate doesn't do that; it does the opposite. Or if you add citrate later, or you sort of do a chelation with citrate, it restores, gets rid of the platelet pumping. But overall, it's not it, it, it's it's not going to hurt. It's not going to hurt. The benefits from ozone are outrageous. And so now you, so the ten pass allows you to go in and keep going in because it keeps hyperbaric. In other words, it keeps the the the, the pressure is higher. Than, uh, than atmospheric so that the blood doesn't get a chance to sit and, and clot. Because the whole idea with heparin is to prevent the blood from clotting when it's sitting in that glass. Because when it comes out, it would naturally just clot all up. And so you've got heparin in there that prevents it from clotting. But 
if you were to do do that again, I said, well, let's do it twice. Let's do it three times. Well, every time you add heparin, that heparin goes into your blood. You'll be too much heparin and you'll bleed. You'll have a brain bleed or something like that. So you can't do that. So the 10 pass came out. The 10 pass is hyperbaric, so you don't have to use as much heparin. And then they came out with EBO. And EBO is basically dialysis. They can pretty much... Uh, I think the, it, 10 times more than you can do with a 10 pass, right? Whew. It's hot, man. It's hot. You know, I'll bet, uh, in, in, uh, I'll bet it's like already, already like 32, 33, 34, 35, upper 80s, 90s, the, in, but, but hotter. But remember, no, it's, not, it's not dry here at all. Uh, it's warm. But I got this fan on, which is doing nothing. Uh, ah, but that's too noisy. I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay. So anyway, so um, now the other things that ozone does are just incredible. I mean, I, 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 you, I can't even list them. You need to look it up. You need to look it up. But it stimulates cytokine productions that are anti-cancer. It, um, but no, but, 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 but when I say anti-cancer, what I mean is... If you all recall that our immune system can be working on a TH1 as a TH1 or TH2, we call it. And they're, they're talking about the helper cells because the helper cells kind of direct what's going on of the T cells that are made, that are bone marrow derived lymphocytes that go to the thymus underneath the breast bone. And that thymus T turns them into lymphocytes, into T lymphocytes. All right. And that thymus shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. So 30s, not as big. 40s, not as big. 50s, 60s, 70s. Okay, T cells, immunity. So what do we need? Thymus and alpha-1, get it. Peptide science is the only place I know you can get it in the U.S. Europe, you guys are having a, you have a big major problem because you got, because the EU passed the Codex Alimentarius back. When was that? When was that? It was like 20 more years ago, I remember, because when that was being passed, we thought, oh, we realized, we thought, no, next it's going to come to the U.S. But the codex says, basically, you can only have, the only kinds of uh, supplements that can be sold are supplements that are meet, uh, that are within the uh, RDA, the recommended daily allowance. And the recommended daily allowance is um, absurd, because what it is, it's the amount of a substance you need not to have a terminal deficiency con condition. So I just want to prevent terminal deficiency. No, no, I kind of like to get up to optimal functioning. So therefore, the EU says they don't sell tablets more than 50 milligrams. So now I got to take, how many do I have to take? Anyway, um, so, so the ozone stimulates that, it goes into TH. So it stimulates, it brings us back to the TH1 because cancer, remember, is, or, or chronically fermenting cells wind up getting a TH2 um, uh, functionality, which is a chronic slow motion and it's tumor supporting, tumor supporting system. Yeah. Okay. Remember that. So that's very important. Very important. Okay. Um, and, uh, Yeah, there's just there's just so many. Um, so I want to tell you, there was the other way is the one of the original ways was to direct the gas, and you've got to push in the gas at a very slow slow rate. And the reason you got to push it in at a slow rate is because um, uh, if you get a if you get a if you get a, a large enough gas of any kind, except oxygen, it get, goes through your lungs. You know goes through your lungs, through your arteries, uh, to your, through your veins, to your lung, and then you're to your right, into the right side of your heart first. What happens is the heart, you can get, it's called an air embolus. Embolus is something that travels through the blood, right? So normally when we talk about pulmonary embolus, uh, we're talking about a blood clot that went from the pelvis or the leg to the right heart and then up into the vein and stopped it and you're in the, very bad very bad uh but anyway this is an air embolus that you can get or an ozone embolus um and that can if you get too big but you got to get a pretty big dose. you gotta get like 
what is it, 10, 15 cc's of, 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 of gas to go in. And what happens is the heart doesn't expand and it winds up going into kind of a fibrillation. So it can be very, very dangerous. Okay. So that's why the even the, the European Ozone Commission doesn't recommend, won't recommend direct gas. However, if you're doing it slowly enough, then it's fine. And now Dr. Sartori, who was really, 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 really Dr. Ozone, was a master at it. And he got arrested and jailed in all these countries of Europe and America and everywhere. I met him in Thailand, which is why I came to Thailand way back when. And he, uh, you know, the poor guy, my first day of meeting him, I was like so excited. I was going to learn this stuff from the master. And right when we start our conversation, he, they come up and arrest him. That was crazy. But anyway, but he mastered it. And we used to do, we, we, we do that. You just got to do it slowly enough. And the person knows because when they get into the grass, if they start to go, then you say, oh, you slow down a little bit. Because you're getting the whole blow. But that's what the good news is about the 10 pass. And that's the good news about the Ebo because you don't have to worry about the direct gas. But direct gas is good. Because I used to, I asked Sartori, I said, well, we do the major auto hemo, hemo, which is, you know, 200 cc's of blood. And he goes, sure. Yeah. What if you wanted to, um, I don't know, ozonate your pool? You take out a gallon, ozonate it, throw it in. Is that going to help? No. Chlorine in one gallon, throw it in. It's the same thing. You gotta do you gotta do more with the blood. So anyway, um, that's ozone, and the effect on platelets is minimal and reversible. Don't worry about it. But um, unless I mean, unless you had like a platelet count that was extremely high, like if you have a, a myelodysplastic syndrome where your platelets are nine hundred, a million, you know. But I mean, uh, your doctor will know about that. Now, um, the other thing is uh, something that most people don't know about. And if you got, if you go to a clinic, talk to them about doing this. It's called minor autohemo. It seems to have been forgotten somehow. But minor autohemo is very, very important. You take out maybe five cc's of your blood from here, from your port or whatever, and mix it with five cc's of ozone into in a big syringe, perhaps a twenty cc syringe. And shake it vigorously, the opposite of what you what we just talked about a moment ago. You, you move it only slowly. You shake it vigorously because you want to burst up, burst open every cell. Because you want to, whatever tumor cells are in there, you want to burst them open so that all parts on the inside and all different aspects of those tumor cells are now being exposed. Then you give that as an injection into the butt. And what happens? You put an injection into the butt. The, the, that's that's trauma. Injections are trauma. So the immune system shows up, all the macrophages, dendritic cells, polymorphonucleosides, etc., all show up. And they check out everything. And now they have all these new antigens, in other words, things that they can go after that they find that are not part of who you are. So in other words, now the tumor not just the intact tumor cell antigens that are on the outside surface, which the cancer cell has successfully made the immune system not see. Now you've broken it up and you've got all these other little parts that the immune system does see. So you do this twice a week because the antigenic coat on a cancer cell changes about every 72 hours. About, about, about. So anyway, so if you do this twice a week, it's kind of like it wakes up, it reminds your immune system. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, there it is. There it is. It's a good thing. Minor out of him. And they shouldn't charge you too much for that. My gosh, it's not a big deal. But they will. Is distilled water okay? Or are we missing minerals? Remember, you're not, if you're only drinking water, you're doing water fast, you don't do distilled water. But if you're drinking during the day and, and you just water, you can use distilled water because you're going to get your minerals from your the salads you're eating, from the, from the uh, chia seeds you're eating, from the uh, everything that you're eating, you'll be getting your minerals. So you don't have to worry about it. The water is not the way you get your minerals. That's not the goal of water. The goal of water is to keep you hydrated. Yeah. So, um, so in the next question, boy, I, too much long, but I, you know, it's, it's just, I wanted to go over ozone a little bit. Is H bot. Okay. Same thing. H bot is the hyperbaric oxygen, which is 10 pass. Is it good for metastatic, for breast metastatic cancer? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Any kind of metastatic. 
how to keep metastatic cancer cells dormant. Well, this, um, you keep them dormant by um, having a very clean, healthy lifestyle, getting to sleep early, making your body pristine, uh, using things like um, um, ivermectin and things like that in case any of them turn into to stem cells, ivermectin and thenbendazole and curcumin and vitamin C, you use those kinds of things and, and doxycycline, you can use all those things to keep them, any of the cancer stem cells in that. But eventually those of uh, those metastatic cells, you know, they won't, um, uh, and they need a blood supply, right? So don't, don't go biopsying other bigger things because then you, you unleash the ability of metastatic clusters to grow blood vessels. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, what's ridiculous is that they remove, uh, they give, they do, 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 do these biopsies. I mean, think, okay, you're gonna do a biopsy? Why? To find out if it's cancer, because it pretty much looks like cancer. On X-ray, on ultrasound, on MRIs, on CTs, on PET. PET for sure will tell you. Um. Oh, but we want to know the histology, the basic, really, histology, so that we can get some of our designer drugs. Mm. Okay, so the histology of cancer will be, what they mean is, they want, to, they want to give it a name. Where did it come from? Oh, this one came from the duct, and it went, oh, look, it made a hole in the duct. Invasive ductal carcinoma. Wow, am I, is that... Am I, if I, am I not smart? I could say those words. Oh my God. You, you, wanna, you know, you guys, I think I'm going to start hanging up all my plaques on the wall so you can see how smart I am. Okay. Okay. But anyway, that's the typical allopathetic freak with the white coat. Um, anyways, that's what the histologist is going to do. It's going to give you a definition of where it started. Oh, he doesn't have a normal pancreatic cancer. He has an neuroendocrine what that's different no what's different about it it started in a different cell it didn't start in one of the glands it started in one of uh, the part of the pancreas that's producing usually insulin or glucagon which are yeah. anyway okay so that's that so the, the, when they buy it, so well, the, so whether they're going to come out with well then then we'll know what chemos to use So, why do you have to know which chemos to use? Well, because uh, the studies show that platins are good for this and uh, taxanes are good for this and blah, blah, blah. So, well, if we go back to 1943, the first cancer uh, person with uh, chronically fermenting cells was treated with uh, insulin potentiated. IPT, which we didn't, it wasn't called that in those days. We named it that in around 2000, 99 maybe, we named it that. Uh, prior to that, it was just what it was. Um, um, insulin is basically a biological response modifier. Oh, another one of those phrases, which means absolutely nothing. Just people like to use it to sound smart. Biological response modifier. So it changes the way the body's responding. Well, so is this a biological response modifier? And so is oxygen in the air. You know, so give me a break with your words, you guys. Anyway. Anyway. Um, 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 yeah. 43. Okay, good. 43. First guy was treated. They didn't have chemo in those days. So they had to use whatever poisons they had. So a little bit of arsenic and a little bit of mercury. In fact, it cured the tertiary syphilis as well. Tertiary syphilis, syphilis that goes to the brain. Causes psychiatric problems. Okay. You poor guys over there in uh, Instagram land. Let me see. There we go. Okay, and let me put you here. Uh, I can't. 
Um, so in other words, the poison got in. So what the insulin does is it allows poison to get in or the food you eat. That's why insulin does what it does. It stimulates an enzyme that makes the cells permeable uh, to whatever's there. So if it's your food, nutrition, yeah, it increases nutri nutrient uptake. But if you happen to have arsenic there or whatever there, it's going to increase it. Or like we do, intravenous, <clears throat> insulin potentiated, curcumin therapy, right? Quercetin therapy. doesn't have to be a poison. But it can be, but it can be chemo. Uh, anyway, uh, 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 uh. anyway, just to finish this story is that <clears throat> what I want you to know, what I want you to realize is that it doesn't matter. So I often have, not often, always have an A and B protocol when I'm doing IPT. A protocol is the latest and greatest clinical trial proven <laughs> chemo, and B is. Old-fashioned ones don't cost very much anymore. You can get all four of them for under a, uh, $20. They don't like to use that because it's not in vogue. <clears throat> and, you know, all these oncologists like to go and talk to each other and, 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 and show each other that, that they're playing the game together. And right, they didn't step out of line. Just like all of the doctors over the last three years have done the same thing and now are being discredited. And then now are now doctors all over the world are waking up, not only waking up, speaking up. They're speaking up in Malaysia big time. They're speaking up in Singapore. They're speaking up in uh, in Aust Australia, big time, Canada, big time. You know, you know, um, UK. They, 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 now it's in vogue to speak up. Well, good, good. I'm glad it's in vogue for people to be honest. Um, I don't talk a lot about that stuff just because that's not what we're here for. Okay. If I had a separate channel on Rumble or something, and we we're going to talk about that stuff. That's one thing. But you know, for me to keep up on all that's move going on with. Uh, chronically fermenting cells and how to deal with them. That's really, uh, that's really my priority, you know? And um, although I, my hobby is reading about, and I, I kind of know all the stuff that's going on. By the way, just in case you guys don't know, <clears throat> now that everyone's waking up, just, all right. Now that everybody's waking up, they're going to have to do something even stronger and bigger. And it's not that they didn't know, and it's not that they weren't prepared, because they were. Um, something like, uh, I don't know, financial crisis, collapse of the banks, oh, loss of electricity, no internet. Okay. So protect yourselves, prepare, get ready for that possibility by getting your money and s turning some of it into gold. Crypto, I have no idea anymore. No idea. I mean, I know, I know all about it. But it goes up and down like the stock market. It's all on whatever. It's not only emotion. It has to do with BlackRock and Vanguard and their movement of $26 trillion here and there. They can kind of move with that. So anyway, thing is, um, you know, the idea is that you might want to get some stuff in your own hands just in case, not just in case, for when this all happens. That might be the next one. They also might expand what they're calling World War III and stuff like that. So you have, anyway, you got to be ready for these things because I don't think the next uh, big deal, um, you know, the, the invisible critters are going to come to us again until, from what I hear, 2025. Anyway, that's not why we came here, and I know that. I'm sorry. Yeah, how to buy gold. You know, there are jewelers you can get actually gold coins. And now here's something I want to tell you all really interesting. If you get coin that uh, gold coin, which is available, uh, it's just a little bit more expensive, a little bit than the regular coin. That was minted before 1933. It's considered what they call coin of the realm. And if it's coin of the realm, it trumps all other coins because they cannot. There is no formula to equate coin of the realm with the fiat paper stuff they have you realize that 
It's called Coin of the Realm. So get yourself some of that. I mean, minted in 1923, 1930, 1918, 1895, all that. Get your dollars and stuff like that. Get little ones too, five dollar ones, so you can trade, so you can get around. Because it'll always, it'll always be, it'll you'll always be able to use it. And get some currency too, because even after they crash the banks, we'll be able to use currency for a while uh, until they crash that. Uh, anyway, that's not why we came. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, let's go to the next question. How to keep metastatic cells from how to permanently stop them again. And I, and I see this all the same person. I understand it and I get it because that's it. Remember metastatic cells aren't metastatic until they arrive. And then when they arrive, they can produce a new tumor. So what all the things we're talking about, the healthy living and all that sort of thing and the mind, the mind, the mind, the mind, all of those things require that uh, will, will make the tumor microenvironment not suitable being active. I mean, all the things that we talk about are going to do that. Plus, as I said, the things to prevent and kill. Uh, yeah. Star Trek had it right. Yeah. Well, remember, uh, it's to kill the cancer stem cells. I'm like so distractible. You know, you know what, if I were in school now, do you know what they would do? They'd, pro they'd put me on Ritalin for sure. For sure. They say this guy needs like a thousand milligrams a day of Ritalin to keep him focused, you know, how, okay, so we take little kids, you know, I, I, I do you ever see little kids when, you, if you don't t put, tell them what to do, what are they doing? They're all over the place, they're playing. Now we're gonna take them and put them in a room, sit them on a chair and tell them to do study. That's not their natural inclination, some of them, but my daughter was blew my mind, my daughter. She's 27 now, but I remember as a little kid, seven years old, six years old, after school, she's doing her homework. I said, you're not going to go out. Where's your brother? Oh, he's out playing. Why don't you go out play for a while? I go, no, no, I have to do my homework first. She was like always that way. She was always, I got to do my homework first. It's great. Amazing girl. Amazing girl. Um, but anyway, that was kind of like me. I mean, I always, I'm, I'm a weirdo. I like to read. I like to study. I like to learn. That's all I do. I've been reading and uh, uh, since uh, since I could. You know what? I'll get to tell you something's really weird. Sorry. Personal stuff. Before I could read, you know what I used to do? Because my I saw my mom reading. And this is so really important for parents. Parents, remember parents. Your children do not listen to what you say. Your children listen to who you are. Your children listen to who you are. So my mother would be, we used to read at night. You got to remember, we're talking about a long time ago, man. There, you know, if there were what maybe four channels, five channels on TV, and you know, it, it wasn't that wasn't people's lives, and there was certainly was nothing else. So reading was what was happening. And my mother used to read, and I didn't know how to read yet. I was still I don't know how old I was. I can't remember. How old do you have to be not to read? Five, two, five. You start learning at six. Anyway, I couldn't read anything. You know what I used to do? I used to pick up books and do what she did. What did she do? She was, and I did it for like an hour. It's not like I just did it for five seconds. I did it for an hour. I pretended I could read. I don't know what I was getting from it, but I was getting something because I did it frequently. And as soon as I could read, I started reading. Anyway, hi, Mary. Thank you so much. Star Trek, yeah. So look at that that technology. What was that thing that uh, Bones had? Bones was the doctor. He had this machine, and he, oh yes, uh, I think he's human. Jim, Jim, yeah, he's human. Anyway, you know we don't even need those machines. And okay, and I want to go back to one of my original things today. And I know, sorry, but this is it. We put all of our energy into the world out there and not in here. And I know that if we put the energy and our creativity, whatever that means, and uh, heart and soul into working on this, in, you, you, you know this is not a thing, this body. 
you know the body's not a thing. It's a vehicle. And it is just light and vibration and intelligence. Everything around us is light, vibration, and intelligence. We can merge with it easily. I wouldn't, if we worked on ourselves instead of on these machines, we would be able to connect with each other without these machines. Study remote viewing, okay, by the CIA and the, and the Soviet Union back in the day, okay? These are programs that remained around for a long time because they worked, because they're real, because they means the guy lying in San Francisco, the CIA agent lying in San Francisco could go lie down and get into a remote, remote viewing and uh, could tell them exactly where a Soviet sub was off the coast of Maine. I mean, what? Exact coordinates. So, we, you know, we, uh, so what we, the, the potential of the human being is not even close to being realized and we're getting further and further away with it, with, from it, with all this stuff. I'm just telling you. There are more than a million reasons why all of this stuff is bad. Bad, I mean, un, um, not healthy for us. However, here we are. Now, here's the problem. Here we are in the middle of a technological world and we're being assaulted. So we need to use what we can of this technology to organize and get together so that we can try to, uh, so, so, so that we can, and our goal should not be to get out of here and, and, uh, uh, continue on the path of producing things things to worship it's called idolatry thou shall have no other god but me we do what do humans have two gods two gods what are they what are those two gods we have what's number one what's number one everybody know number one god of humans the mirror the mirror the mirror have you met the mirror ask narcissus our narcissus ran into the mirroring effect of a lake and that's where we got the word narcissism all right Stephen. i'm not sure what you what you got that's excellent great i'm glad you're doing it but i'm just saying these guys were able to do lots of stuff like that it's well known well documented anyway you go to india look at these guys that have been med meditating for decades they have things called siddhis which are powers which they don't think about because they have no need for using them but they could do things that we would say wow Okay, so I believe we could talk to each other. I, I believe we could, we could we could move around. I mean, these bodies are are made of you know what? Are, okay, so what's my skin made of? Carbon, oxygen, nitrogen. What are those? Atoms. Mm, what are atoms doing? Spinning. What are spinning? Well, neutrons, protons, uh, and electrons. Mm, oh, and what are they? No, don't ask such a question. What are they? They're subatomic particles. And but we know that this one is divided into leptons and okay. Okay, what are they? what's an electron okay so that's all that stuff but we know know that when electrons flow through a wire it's called electricity and we also know that when electrons flow through our body we are alive and when we have flat lines we're not alive okay so we need to have that electricity moving and what are those electrons what are electrons nobody knows okay so anyway sorry if you um I think I got off subject, but I really didn't. I really didn't. The point is, within us is so vast. And that we could also actually, I mean, I, I have no idea. We have no idea of our potential. But we're not even looking for it. When we say he's got great potential at mathematics, he's got great potential at electronics great potential at doing something external to um, bringing mind body and spirit together into a resonance that allows access to the universe that's kind of Stuff I'd like to get into, right? But I'm too busy doing this stuff. I got all these machines and here. But we need the machines right now so we can organize and get out of this and get, get and we're all doing it. You guys are waking up. Wake up the guy next to you. If the guy is, um, if the guy is, um, uh, the guy, the people next to you that are, um, 
uh, that don't know what's happening, you know, um, that's okay for now, for now, you know, just get, the, let's get us who do know what's happening. Let's get together. Let's figure, let's organize. Okay. Uh, Iris Co. KOH from Singapore had this great thing yesterday. It's called wake up Asia. So it was all these people, but it had some of the great people, Dr. Dr. Bhakti, um, who, who you've probably all seen on, on, on rumble and stuff like that, but he was there and all that. And it's happening all over. And you got, um, even even the straight even the conventional doctors are waking up. That's there. I mean, there's it's not. Yeah, there. Some of them are waking up, but some of them are actually just coming out of their timid little closets and 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 and, and because they didn't want to rock the boat. Anyway, please talk to us about hydrogen water and hydrogen inhalation. All right. So um, I'll, I'll make it brief. Hydrogen, hydrogen, the smallest of the um <clears throat> atoms on the periodic table in other words of all the substances in the universe it's the smallest unit it's the smallest the hydrogen atom which consists just of an, uh, a proton and an, an electron that's all it is right helium is two protons two electrons <laughs> lithium three protons three, and it goes on and on and on, and on. Uh, that's all the difference between one element and another, but it all comes down to protons and electrons. And then well, I think what's at lithium, we add in new, neutrons, or is it at helium, we add in uh, neutrons? Hydrogen doesn't have a neutron, but I think helium does. Can't remember. Got to look that up. Does it start at helium or does it start at lithium? Well, at some place, the neutrons get in. And now you have a third subatomic particle. They call them particles, but who knows? They're not particles. They act, they're, they're moving around, flying around, whatever. And they're full of energy. That's why when you open up one of those little things called an atom, what do you have? Right? I, you know, if, if I can't see it and I can't touch it and I can't smell it, it just ain't real. So you don't talk to me about that stuff. Tell me I want to see it. I'm talking about solid, real stuff. Oh, yeah. What is that solid, real stuff made of? Oh, it's wood. Okay, it's a wood desk. It's solid. You know what I mean? Solid. Made of what? Carbon. Made of nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus. Oh, what are they? Mm -hmm. Atoms. Well, what happens when you open up the middle of an atom? You have Hiroshima. You have Nagasaki. Okay, so in the middle of whatever we call matter, stuff, is energy. Incredible energy. Oh, E equals MC squared. You remember that dude with the white hair? What's his name? Albert, Albert Gorky. No, Albert Gorky was who? Vitamin C, right? No, Albert Einstein. Yeah. I mean, anyway, Albert Einstein um, said energy is matter moving at the light of the speed of light squared. So anyway, so hydrogen, smallest in the world. You So it's unstable because it's got one electron. You have to have a paired electron to be stable. So one hydrogen hooks up with another hydrogen and you have H2. Now it's stable and it's in a gas form in our temp at our temperature on, on Earth. So it's called hydrogen gas. So it's the smallest molecule in the universe. Well, it permeates all cells, all things. And when it gets into the cell and it finds these free radicals called hydroxyl radicals, which are the end metabolic by byproduct in, in almost all toxic reactions. And so we accumulate hydroxyl radicals throughout our day. Okay, it's one of the, <clears throat> anyway, when the hydrogen gets in there, one hydrogen turns into uh, one a high, a high, an H2 hits an OH negative, which is hydroxyl, and you wind up with H2O, which is water. Okay, so it's a beautiful, perfect, specific antioxidant. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> anyway, very, very, very important, especially now that we know that the effects of EMF, electromagnetic frequencies, the effects of Wi-Fi are that they, they, they paralyze our voltage-gated calcium channels, which we wind up, well, that's where all the problems come from, EMF. You know, the calcium goes in, mixes with nitrogen, uh, and, uh, nitric oxide, which becomes peroxynitrates, which become hydroxyl radicals. It does all the damage. So if you use uh, hydrogen gas, it goes in and turns that whole process off. And there's no problem with EMF. Um, so eat healthy too, because uh, the more healthy food you eat, um, you can maybe exceed the norm, the uh, usual 10 liters of hydrogen gas that are produced in our colons and our bowels. 
um, throughout the day. Brought to you by uh, none other than God. Yeah, God was thinking about, is thinking about. That's not true. God's not thinking about everything. God is everything. God is the intelligence and everything. So therefore, anyway, brought to you by God called hydrogen gas. We make 10 liters in our body. Okay. So now by getting extra hydrogen gas, so you can get those tablets or you can get a hydrogen gas uh, machine that makes it in the water and drink the water right away while it's fuzzing, right? It's got the hydrogen gas. Um, and then you can increase that. So especially if you're around computers all day or you get on a plane and you go above 30,000 feet, you can start getting exposed to gamma rays, drink a big glass. You know, put three tablets in a big glass of water and just when they're all, when they all go to the top, <laughs> drink it. And that'll last you a few hours. All right. Melatonin does similar things with hydroxyl radicals. So it's good. Viruses, parasites, links to illness. Yep. Yep. They're linked to illness. Yes, very much so. We know that parasites, we know that parasites, a lot of parasites and, and, and what we call, what we call viruses, whatever they are, whatever they are. And that's, an, that's another thing, but viruses, yeah, they absolutely are, exist in situations where there is a, a failure of uh, the harmony of health because health is a harmonic resonance between mind, body, and spirit which results in the optimal functioning of the organism. And it's something that we never ever had, except if we, we might have had glimpses of it at the age of three to eight, when we were running and running and running and full of energy, most of us. Not, some unfortunate people didn't have that opportunity, but, but for most of us, we had that. And that was kind of on an energetic level. If we had been led by, if our parents had been uh, highly evolved, realized beings, we could have really gone and to another level at that point, but we didn't. We got lost in the <clears throat> dichotom dichotomous polar I am thou universe of illusion. The I am thou. It's us against them. Yep. Yep. My football team is better than your football team. My baseball team is better than your baseball team. My God's better than your God. My shirt's better than your shirt. That's where we are. Dichotomy. Question about dichotomy, everyone. Question. Quick question. Just thought. Rhetorical. Okay. I love re uh, rhetoric. Okay. Uh, now, up has no meaning without down, right? We agree. Front has no meaning without back. They, 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 they both require each other to exist. You can't have a front without a back. You can't have an up without a down. Right? So my question to you is, does up exist without down? No. Does down exist without up? No. Does front exist without back? No. Does back? No. Therefore, do... Either of them really, how come, how come though? So there's two don't exist. So you have two zeros and you put them together. You come out with a two zero, zero plus zero is, 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 oh, that's right. Zero. Okay. So that's the point I'm making. All illusion. And I'm talking scientifically. I'm not talking psychiatrically. I'm not in a psychiatric hospital talking to you about weird shit. I'm talking to you about what is real. Sorry if I got off topic. Can't help it. Your opinion on deep root dental cleaning, please. Pros and cons, if there are any. Deep root dental cleaning. Um, I, I, anything done by a regular dentist should be should not happen. Don't go to don't don't go to regular dentists. Go to biological dentists, bio dentists. And there are some great ones. Um, there are some amazing ones. And then the rest of them are just faking it. Um, and that's the problem. How do you know? So you got to find out from someone who knows. But usually, basically, here's the thing. Deep root cleaning, if they're putting in and injecting ozone, that's good. Ozone, why? Ozone gas can permeate and go through the, por the porosity of the bones of the, of the, uh, of the jaw 
and which is where cavitations form and uh, into the into the roots and things like that. So if they're doing those kinds of injections, they're they're very they're very good. Deep root cleaning, uh, and the ozone will sterilize. Will get rid of any of the microorganisms down there. So that's what I would. That's what you use. You're not going to get that from a regular dentist. So that's why I think that's what you just question you just asked was a regular dentist. So just avoid them. Like you avoid regular doctors. Do fertility meds cause breast cancer or ovarian cancer? Yeah, I mean, big time. These are very heavy doses of synthetic hormones and synthetic hormones overstimulate and cause extreme imbalances and can result over time in cells that are being, uh, that begin to ferment because it damages them. So that can happen, yes. How, how to protect body from frequent ionized radiation, like CTs, during cancer treatment? Um, okay, so here's the thing. When you're getting, uh, you, you shouldn't be getting them frequently. There's a lot of other ways of knowing on your progress. And you look at different biochemical markers, LDH, ferritin iron ratio. You look at the kidney function and liver function. You look at... Um, you know, thymidine kinase, you look at the lymphocyte subset. Um, there are many, many ways of looking. Um, thank you, Uzma. Someone does. Um, yes, yes, uh, uh, Julie, uh, Dr. Mercola does have hydrogen pills that dissolve in water. They're fantastic. That's the ones I use, yeah. Um, so, um, however, um, Oftentimes, or it, 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 it's helpful to get a good baseline to saying, where are we starting? Is it in the liver? Is it in the lungs? Is it, is it gone anywhere else or is it still local? Just so we know how long we need to be intense. Intense, I mean five, six days a week of working at it versus, uh, <clears throat> you know, how long do we have to do that? Usually, like if it's, if it's gone all over, we might have to do that for 12 weeks. Whereas if it's just in one location, we can probably do that in six weeks. So that's the difference. So knowing that is helpful. <clears throat> so after you get the CT or the, and or CT, PET CT, uh, then what we do, you come in with it within the hour and you get like 10 grams of vitamin C <clears throat> per hour for three to four hours. Just a small antioxidant physiological to neutralize the effects, not high dose vitamin C, to neutralize the effects. But I'm saying sometimes they're necessary. And then you want to find out if you're done. How far have we gotten? How, how effective was the therapy, right? So, yeah. Can I take artemisinin instead of ivermectin? <clears throat> they're, they're really uh, really two different things, I ivermectin and artemisinin. Completely different. You should take both. and or, It's not or, both. Is there a cure for kidney failure? Well, if the kidneys have truly failed, now I don't know what the definition is usually has to do with uh, glomer, glomerular filtration rate. And uh, the glomeruli are the little functional units of the kidney. Um, that's where all the basic, that's where the kidney function is done, is in the glomeruli. Uh, so I don't know what's happened. If those have been destroyed, broken up by something um, it depends but most often if a kidney has if kidneys have failed most often it's really difficult very 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 difficult to bring them back i have i personally have never worked with someone like that to, 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 with our goal to bring back kidney function i've been able to help people who were on their way who had what's called renal insufficiency and to bring them back. Um, but again, just like I was told and all doctors were told in medical school that cirrhosis of the liver is irreversible, it turns out not to be irreversible. It turns out to be quite reversible. So the answer is I've never done it. I, my sense is, is that, but in the meantime, you would need dialysis because you got to keep your blood clean in order to heal and all that sort of thing. So you would need dialysis in the meantime. Absolutely. Um, and I mean, they should be at the point too, where pretty close with stem cells, where they can actually help you um, 
replace your old uh, kidney with new kidney, with your own new kidney instead of a kidney transplant. So you don't have to take, um, you know, immune suppressant drugs that you have to take when you get transplants, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's see. We, let's go past. Uh, come on, let's go past. Let's go past. Can my dear friend, 64-year-old former football player, get well from a diagnosis of stage four bone prostate? Yes, yes, can, 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 can. All the time, happens all the time. Just got to get away from the conventional freaks, witches and warlocks, because they're going to do nothing but poison and... and and, and, and it's just, you know, Lupron and these other drugs that block the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, which turns it all off, is not the answer. How do we know it's not the answer? Because after a while, it's it's growing anyway. So all that, all that was doing was slowing it down for a while. Why? why? There's many reasons why. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> But yeah, the answer is yes. So TikTok, uh, uh, <clears throat> Dr. Uh, the, the, the topic was Dr. Kobayashi passed away just after this video. What type of diet? You mean did did Dr. Kobayashi had have he had um, he was mostly vegetarian, but he ate fish. But the reason he got cirrhosis is unknown to me i tried to find out from him but he's <clears throat> he puts cryptic on a new level we have a new word for cryptic when the time comes to kobayashi we'll just call it kobayashi speak but i have no idea but anyway it wasn't a virus because cirrhosis usually comes from chronic hepatitis viruses or chronic alcoholism or you know chronic fatty liver from overeating overeating blah blah blah, blah. you get those kinds of end stage um <clears throat> liver conditions he said it was something botanical so i don't know if he was taking some botanical herb for many years and it destroyed his liver without him knowing it until later i don't know he's it was a very private man and it's a shame because it's a shame it's a shame i still can't believe it i can't believe it i just don't want to believe it i believe it but i don't want to believe it i don't want to believe the kobayashi's past now I don't know what that question is. How do bra, how would a bra cause cancer? If that was the case, so would underwear or the items of clothing. This is crazy foil hat kind of thinking. Well, dartboard, dartboard, um, it's not foil. And what's crazy about foil hats? What's crazy, dart board is that people would have to even consider wearing a foil hat because they're being bombarded by electromagnetic frequencies, 5G, 4G, all this other stuff. That's crazy. So people are looking for answers to try to protect themselves. And if you haven't ever been sick yet, you will get sick. And it's pain and suffering that are the best teachers of humanity. Okay. Because we're just not smart enough to do, to live healthy. We're not smart enough. No, we're not smart. We've got to be hit on the head big time to wake up and maybe twice, maybe three times, you know, like they say with alcoholism, you got to hit your bottom or drug addiction. You got to hit your bottom, right? Everyone's got a different bottom. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> anyway, so the way bras work with that, just in case that's a real question or I'm not sure what you said, but um, the uh, breasts are uh, full of blood vessels and lymphatic vessels. Okay. When you've got a, br when you're, when they're being kept tight all day long, and then people even wear them at night. Those lymphatics are not getting a chance to move around. Then you get stagnation. But when a woman is not wearing a brassiere bra and she's walking or moving around, the, 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 the lymphatics are moving, the blood vessels are moving, and you get better drainage of waste and stuff like that. So it's a real reason. It's real. Um, and you're right. If someone wore too small of underwear, if you wore tight underwear, a male, a male, where your testicles and were being compressed, that would do the same kind of thing. Okay, it would prevent um, flow. Flow, preventing flow is what we're talking about. So you could, for a woman, you could wear a you could wear a, a, a loose fitting um, 
cloth bra that's not uplift and tight and all that sort of thing. Or you could, if you're worried about people seeing it, they have these things that ever that you can actually paste on to cover the nipples so the nipples don't show. So that um, you know, so women that are modest don't and don't and don't want to wear a bra is happening. You can do that. So anyway, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you have you have had breast reduction. You have to wear a compression bra for eight weeks. Absolutely, you do that for eight weeks, and then it's afterwards. I'm talking about on on a long term business uh, basis. Sure. What about cyst growing on chest wall, female? The topic was cyst growing on chest wall. Well, cysts. You mean coming out of the skin? You know, cysts are just, uh, you know, an adaptive response. You know, they can, um, you know, if it's big enough and causing enough problems, you can just lance it, open it up, and allow it to heal. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Is it a big cyst or little cyst, a lot of cysts or chest wall? Please be more specific so I can... Facebook. Okay, so I've been uh, taking zinc 70 mic micrograms daily since June 2021. Do you think I need to take smaller dose or stop for a while? No. I think you should take 30 milligrams, milligrams, not micrograms, three times a day and keep doing it for the rest of your life because your body uses zinc every day. Remember, we've got 20, 36 septillion chemical reactions going on every second and they all need minerals to power those enzymes. And zinc's in what 150 um, different uh, enzyme reactions. Yep, yep. What time is it, you guys? Okay. So, um, okay, I'm disgusted with most holistic. This is Facebook. I'm I'm disgusted with most holistic centers and physicians I've come in contact with over the past 40 years in this field. The fee, the fees they charge for counseling and therapy are outrageous. Most most of the time, the price many citizens and individuals in need right out of the equation. Most of the time, yeah, it's too expensive. I am a holistic consultant. I do not have a medical degree, but I study enough to know that I can assist most individuals. Wh whether by cardiovascular disease or cancer from a holistic creative. Event. All of the research you uncover on the internet is full of potential positive results. There is no one pill to can, can uh, 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 I'm disgusted that there is a holistic center in New York, which is led by a certain position, and I have followed for decades. I have him more once IP6, this program. Anyway, uh, yeah, okay, uh, Michael, I get you, I get it. No, I am disgusted. One of the reasons I came to Thailand was to see if I could find a way to lower the costs for healing uh, and it shouldn't be so expensive. It's really too expensive. I agree, I agree, 100%. And it's because it's the cost of all the personnel. If you wanna do it right, you gotta have a, you gotta have health educators, you gotta have chefs, you gotta have chef assistants, you've gotta have a lymphatic therapist, you gotta have uh, uh, specially trained uh, nurses for hyperthermia, which have to be ICU trained. Then you have to have other nurses on the floor for all, it's just a, a lot, a, so much. It's just the cost in these programs is the personnel. So we're hoping that we can lower that. I've had and money are wasted. I started opening the capsule and moving towards. Okay. Anyway, so let's go on, you guys, with this. What do you think about vaccines? Which ones are, which ones in particular do you think are dangerous? Oh, I don't want to get knocked off any platforms, but let me just put it this way. We have a natural method of becoming, developing immunity. The goal of a vaccine would be to produce immunity. That would be the goal of it. We are naturally inclined. It's called natural immunity. And natural immunity, we know, is far superior than any other kind of immunity. Because in reality, there is no other kind of immunity. Okay. So... Uh, I hope I answered your question. Uh, 
All right. So yeah, I no longer have two tumors in my right breast. My my breast is caving in. It has been since 2019. Why does this happen? Should I be concerned? Will it stop caving in? Well, you know, that's pretty amazing. 2019 till now, that's a long time. And if that's all that's happening, that's pretty amazing. I, I don't know if you've done scans to see if it's gone elsewhere or anything like that, but that's pretty amazing. I, 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 uh, why is it doing that? It changes shapes, of course, because central parts of tumors become, um, uh, they lose their blood supply and they become necrotic and hypoxic and blah, blah, blah. And then, and then it kind of grows. It's just, it's just moving and shaving. And that's just a normal kind of thing. But the fact that if that's it, I mean, I don't know about your lymph nodes and you didn't mention that. And we didn't talk about whether or not you've had scans to see if it's going anywhere else. So, but that's why it does. It's growing and stuff like that. All right. So, and then also uh, uh, my question is, can cytology CTC testing give a high result of active CTC and clusters as a result of natural therapy because you're successfully breaking the tumor up and attempting to blend things in the bottom. Does this make any sense? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. Does it make sense that the tumor is breaking up and there are therefore more uh, CTCs of circulating tumor cells in the blood? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why that could be it. That, 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 could, that could definitely be one reason. Uh, the world of testing is so complex to gain true in, to gain true insight and accuracy. And then, uh, okay, so yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, and so, how how can I be having high CTCs uh, and clusters if I'm uh, feeling great and all that sort of thing? Yeah, so that's the thing. So we we don't know, okay, uh, where they're coming from. It could be that they're healing. It's just like when tumor markers go up. If the CEA is going up, does that mean the tumor is growing or does that mean it's dying quickly and it's spilling more antigen into the blood? We don't know. We don't know until we do an imaging. It's another reason why imaging is uh, is necessary in many, many cases. Um, just you've got to do them infrequently and you've got to do them with vitamin C afterwards. Um, and uh, well, the same person, uh, this is uh, Lauren. Lorian. Lorian. Also, why do you suggest local anesthesia for lumpectomy instead of general? General anesthesia is a are very very powerful drugs that um, need to be detoxified. So they really take your liver's full attention, and your liver is already fully working. So it really just diverts and it decreases your liver's ability to do its job. Uh, and these poisons have to be eliminated. And a lot of them don't get eliminated and get stored in fat and all that sort of thing. So if you can do a procedure with just local by numbing it up and not get these generalized heavy doses of general anesthesia in your body, you'll be a lot, much less toxic. Okay. And keep in mind that what they have to do with general anesthesia basically is bring you this close to death and not let you die so that you don't feel anything and you don't move and anything. So it's pretty heavy, heavy, heavy stuff. Heavy stuff. Okay, you guys, you know what? The day is over, and I love you all. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, anyway, I hope I, uh, I hope I offended a couple people because that's always good news. Uh, <clears throat> and I hope most of you I didn't offend, and that uh, uh, it helped somehow. But anyway, uh, I'm not real good at all the other uh anyway yeah so you guys you guys are catching it it's beautiful thank you so and uh um uh, namaste namaskar aloha um adios i don't know any many other languages um so goodbye see you next week